Aha, I'm here. <laughs> My screen is frozen. Hey, this is Margaret Lynch from margaretandlynch.com. I don't know how the first few minutes of this is going to look because I couldn't unfreeze my phone. Um, but in this quick video, I want to do a really cool inner child process with you guys right now that is going to make a really big difference for you. So welcome to my little Facebook Live video here. And you know, the reason I'm doing this process today is because I just finished a retreat with my rock stars who are in my one year program. And we did some of this process there because whether you are thinking about looking at your own inner child or this is a process you want to do with your clients or both, which I find with so many coaches, they, they take in the process and then they do it with their clients. It's really uh, amazing how aligned and clear you get when you find out what you really want at an inner child level. So here's the thing. When we look at our marketing and we look at our business and we look at the clients that we want to have, the impact that we want to make, there's a level of something else that we want. It's how do I want to be seen? How do I want to be valued? How do I want to show up? And if I could pick one thing for people to say to me, what would that be? And what would the feeling in me be beyond that? And so there's so many words we use as grownups, right? It's like, well, I want to be respected in my field and I want to um, charge my value. And there's all these things that we, we want on a surface level, which are great. But sometimes if you can get to your or your client's true desire underneath that, what really makes you tick, what you really want to be seen for, when you can get to that quality, it adds a whole a bunch of power. And it can also clear the pathway to you finding out like, how do I create situations where I'm blocking being seen as that? For example, if one of your inner child needs has always been to be seen as brilliant, as incredibly smart, um, then you will sometimes create situations in your life where you're always trying to prove that you're smart. And sometimes they go well, and sometimes they don't. And my thing is that when we can figure that out, we can shift and stop manifesting opportunities to figure out uh, or to prove that if I'm smart enough and instead manifest people coming up to you and saying, oh my God, you are so brilliant. You are so smart. And so this little process we're about to do is going to uncover that for you. So in a second, I'm actually going to have you close your eyes. We're going to visualize and imagine something. So you want to just kind of get settled right now, get ready to do a little process with me. And on the other side of that, you're going to find out something really, really cool. So again, this is for you. If um, if you are a coach and you love to do your own processes, and if you want to do this with a client, you are free to do that as well. Um, or if you really just want to see in whatever business you do, what it is that you really, really want at a deeper level that um, so that you can actually start going after that. OK, OK, so here's what I want you to do. Um, sit down in your chair. Wherever, well, if you're driving, you can't really do this, but sit down, take a breath, close your eyes because we're going to be visualizing and imagine something. And it just works better if you close your eyes, um, although some people just kind of like to stare off into space and that's OK. You can do that, too. Okay, so take a breath and I want you to close your eyes and I'm assuming that you're sitting. So I really want you to do something that might sound a little bit unusual. I want you to tune into the feeling of your feet touching the floor, even if it's just the insides of your shoes or flip flops, just tune into that feeling of your feet touching the floor and take a breath. And now really notice the feeling or the sensation of the chair supporting you. The feeling of the chair holding you as it's touching your butt, your legs, your back. Just really notice that feeling supporting you all the way down through your legs, all the way back down to your feet and really notice your feet. And I want you to take another breath and just imagine what it would be like if you could, with that breath, come further into your body. Maybe that sounds strange. Maybe it doesn't for you. But just imagine what it would be like if you could come even more into your body. And now in this part, it's kind of nice to put your hands on your heart. 
And so put your hands on your heart and imagine with this next breath that you could actually breathe directly into your heart and start to fill up that heart space. And just notice what it's like to take another breath, thinking about breathing into your heart, even though that sounds a little bit strange, and another breath, and breathing into your heart, and just see what it feels like to be there in your heart, and if you could actually even go lower, go lower down into your body. And just see how that feels. Sometimes people will start to feel energy swirling or they'll feel a little bit light and floaty or they'll feel really heavy. And that's okay. You'll feel what you feel. So as you stay in your body, I want you to just allow your mind now to just paint a picture, just whatever your mind paints a picture of or an impression or a feeling of a young child, maybe the age of four or five or six. And just imagine what it would be like if your mind could paint you a picture of that little child. And it's the child that you once were. So I just want you to see that little child and take a breath, take a breath, and just imagine what if I could, or, or say to yourself, hey, I am open to seeing this child even more clearly and just set that intention and notice what happens in the picture because sometimes just by setting that intention you can actually see what the child is even wearing a whole nother level of detail and it's really okay if you feel like you're remembering a picture or you're just making something up it's really just seeing that young child that little one that you once were and so i just want you to get an impression i just want you to get an impression does the child look okay? Or is there anything wrong? Because sometimes when we see this image, the, we, if you've never done any inner child work, you might see the child at a time of fear or sadness or anxiety. Um, and, and I want you to just make a mental note of that because sometimes the way your inner child appears is sort of like information for you. Like, wow, I might need to go later and do a process around um, maybe doing some healing for my inner child. But for right now, I just want you to take that information in. Okay, take that information in. Um, but I want you to be like the adult. So you're sort of stepping into this picture with this little child. And this is all possible because we're dealing with our mind, our unconscious mind and our imagination. Um, and really, we're dealing with our energy system right now because the child you're looking at is, is your inner child. And it's actually an aspect of of your second chakra. So I want you to be like you could step into the picture as an adult, as a loving kind adult, and just say to the child, I am gonna make you safe in this moment. And just go ahead and do that. I am gonna make you safe in this moment. I'm gonna make it safe for you to be totally you with me. And just see if your inner child is sort of believing you or looking at you. Now, for some people, they'll see an inner child that's resistant or doesn't believe them. And um, it just means that you have a little, uh, uh, some work to do around your inner child because your inner child doesn't actually trust you. So mental note for later, you're probably really hard on yourself. Okay, something to work on later. But for right now, I just want you to take another breath and tell the child you're going to bring them to a place where they can feel totally safe with you. And that could be a place from childhood that maybe you like to play or a place in nature. But just take a breath and imagine that you bring this child to this place. And just see if it helps the child feel a little bit more relaxed. And it could be a magical imagination place. Um, it's really just to get that inner child starting to trust you and feeling okay. So hopefully they're feeling a little more relaxed. And so I just want you to take another breath. And I want you to ask your inner child for permission to talk to them, to ask them some questions that you're here to help and they can trust you and see what they say. 
hopefully, I think probably for maybe 70, 80% of you, the child will be willing. That means it could be 30 to 20 to 30% of you where the child's like, no way. And again, it's okay. This is just information for you. Um, and so maybe um, what your inner child might give you right now is something that they want you to work on with them or something that you need to heal. Um, but hopefully your inner child will be willing to give. So I want you to give your inner child, say, this is what I'm asking of you. I want you to show me how amazing you are. Your most amazingness and quality. And I am just going to love it and honor it and be here with you. And so I want you to just see what happens. What does your inner child show you? And sometimes your inner child will change turn into something magical or an animal or get larger than life. And I just want you to watch and see what the inner child is showing you of a quality that they have. And just take all that in and take all that in. Now, if you had a childhood that had a lot of fear and wasn't very safe, sometimes your inner child will be timid. And what they're often saying is, all I want is to be safe. I want a hug. I want to be loved. Um, and, and that's great. And in this moment, you can give your inner child hugs and loves and tell them that you're going to keep them safe. Um, but when we get beyond survival, what we're actually looking for right now is the next thing, right? And so first, at the first level, it's like, I just want to survive and be safe. And I just want love, like basically. But at the next level... There's, if I'm safe, then I get to have fun as a child. I get to show these qualities that are uniquely me. And so I really want you to see if you can push beyond maybe the child um, showing you some things that might just, you want to be seen and be loved and be hugged and taken care of and see if you can also encourage the child to say, now, what would be even bigger and more amazing? Show me your magical side. Show me your amazingness. What do you want me to see? And see if sometimes that can coax your inner child to show you a little bit more. So I want you to really note what the quality is. Is it that the child is special because they are incredibly smart? Or is it that the child is special because they just have this huge, amazing energy? Um, or that they're so loving? Or that they just can, can make a million things happen? Or that they're super strong? What is that amazing quality about this child? And now we're going to do something that's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, okay? Because we want to, we just want to test this. We're going to bring it down and then we're going to expand it again. So I want you to take the child and whisk them back in your imagination. Say, I have to bring you here and place the child in the scene of their childhood home. And somewhere in the background are their parents or caregivers and their family but place the child back into your childhood home where you actually grew up. And I just want you to see what happens. Just want you to see what happens. How does the child's energy come down? How do they have to hide? How do they have to fit into a smaller box? Who do they need to be? And this is interesting because some of us had uh, a, a, a wide range, right? Some of us may have had childhoods where we, we did not feel safe, um, either literally physical safety. If we were seen and we stood out, we weren't physically safe. Others could have a childhood where it just wasn't emotionally safe, so you could get criticized. And for some, we might have had very supportive childhoods, but there may be a quality that was allowed to show and if the child were to show this other bigger more amazing or look at me quality it would have been frowned upon and so even in a loving home there's always a paradigm of what's acceptable and what's okay inside the house so i just want you to see that how does the child have to bring that quality back down and i want you to see what the effect is on that younger version of you of taking their amazingness and bringing it back down and holding it and shrinking it what does it do to the child does it create sadness 
Do you feel sad seeing that? And does it make sense that maybe this child grew up trying so hard to be seen for their amazing qualities, but without really wanting to ask or be straightforward about it? Or maybe spent a lot of their life saying, no, 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 I don't want compliments, I don't want thanks, I, I don't want to get the credit. So I just want you to see that dynamic and just breathe. It's going to be a lot of stuff for you to process after this. But now I want you to take the child and bring them back to the magical, safe, happy place with you again. And just bring them back and say, we're going back to the safe spot. And I want to see your amazingness again. Because this is an opportunity now for you to see it even more clearly. So just visualize bringing your child back and letting their energy expand again and say, what are you dying? What quality? Um, besides love and hugs and safety and all the things that a child absolutely needs, what quality are you dying? Are you dying for me? to see in you that your family couldn't really see. What is it? And so for so many people, their inner child wanted to be seen as special in some very specific way, especially strong, especially caring, especially magical, especially smart especially silly, especially creative, but a specialness that is unique to them. So I want you to really get that quality and honor it in that child. Honor it in that child. Say to the, your inner child, yes, I see you. I see you for this quality. And take a breath. And just know that that's the same quality that you are still dying to be seen for. Even with all your brilliance and all your grown-up stuff and all of your intelligence and degrees and certificates and programs and all of your adult way of operating and all of the things that you're doing, you still want to be seen for that quality. And it's hard when you're not. And that's why it's so good to get clear about it. So take a breath and I just want you to put your hands on your heart if you've moved them away and invite that inner child to just come into your embrace. And you can just imagine that they are just melting right into your heart where they will never be alone again. And you can even say to them in the quietness of your mind, I'm here. I'm going to be here for you. You're never going to be alone. You're never going to be ignored. Because I understand. And I see you. And hopefully your inner child can accept those words and that love. And if you feel emotion coming up, just lean into it. Just lean into it. But let that child go right into your heart where they can always be safe and always be loved and make them a promise. I will let you shine with that quality so that people can see it and say it back. So I just want you to take a breath. Thank your inner child for talking with you today. And you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Or not, you can stay chilled out in that state. But I just want to I just want to suggest to you that as you are doing your marketing and as you are giving talks and workshops or doing anything you do in your daily day, you know, when you work on a project, if you're employed and you're an employee and you go to your boss, or if you're making video and it's on anything in the world, 
that there is a quality, that same quality that you really do in your secret heart of hearts, literally now in your heart, because we put your inner child there, that you want to be seen for, that you want to be seen for. And you may have been spending a lot of time over the years finding yourself in situations where you have to try to be seen for it and battle to be seen for it or battle skeptics or prove yourself over and over and still never really feel satisfied. It's because you haven't allowed yourself to be seen for that quality. And this can be very hard for some people because to say or to admit even to themselves out loud, like, mm, I really want to be seen as special or I actually want to be adored and, and amaze people with this quality that I have. That can feel kind of scary. It can feel like it's breaking a lot of rules, rules that we got from our family, our rules from society. It's like, I want people to be like amazed by this quality that I have. I just don't want to say it. And so you don't have to tell the world, but you need to be clear with what it is for yourself. So I want you to take a paper and a pen right now. I got mine right here. And I want you to write down this affirmation. I want you to write down, I am open to being seen for my amazing fill in the blank on that quality or one or two qualities. I am open to be seen for my amazing blank. And then you're going to continue on. Okay, so the first is I'm open to be seen for my. And the next sentence is going to be, I am open to be complimented for my amazing blank quality. It's getting harder, isn't it? I am open to seeing amazement in people's eyes because of my blank amazing quality. My <laughs> amazing fill in the blank quality. So I'm open to being seen for it. I'm open to being adored for it. I'm open to be complimented and amaze people with this quality. And the more you use words like adored and complimented and amazed, the more uncomfortable you're probably going to get. You're welcome. This is what needs to happen. And I promise you, I promise you that within the next several days, something weird is going to happen because when you get clear about what you want and then you do something that's never, ever been done before on the planet, which you just did in that visualization, I made you do it. You actually give it to yourself first. So when you gave to your inner child and said, I see you for this quality, that was the first time you've given it to yourself. And that changes the entire universe on its axis. And because you did that first, something very strange is going to happen. In the next couple of days, someone is going to come up to you and say, you are so amazing because of blah. And then they're going to say it. Your longed for secret amazing quality that you wrote down on that paper. They are going to compliment you for it. And you're going to be like, wow. And then you're going to be like, this is amazing. And then hopefully you'll be like Margaret Lynch rocks because, you know, it's all about me. And that's the quality that I want to be seen for. So I hope you enjoyed this process. Please don't um, underestimate the power of what your inner child really wants to be seen for and bring that quality, that gift to yourself first as you come into your marketing. And it could work like this, you know, hey, I'm about to make a video or I'm about to write a, 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 write a, a blog post or I'm about to go give a talk. Then go psych yourself up first and say, look at this quality that you want to be seen for and you just want to say it like I am awesome because of this. I am brilliant. I am smart. I am amazing. Psych yourself up and then go into making your video because you're going to allow in a bigger way that quality to shine instead of trying to hide it, trying to prove yourself and then hoping that somehow through all of that someone's going to see it and validate you. 
when you honor it and you own it, it'll come through and compliments will come forward. And, and you know, it's more than compliments. There is nothing more powerful and affirming than feeling a quality in yourself and having someone look back at you and say, I see that too. I see your amazingness. That's the full circle. And that's what we want because we're not meant to live on a cage in a mountain where we never see anybody. So take very seriously what your inner child wants and bring it into what you do. Ask yourself how you can bring it in more. Do affirmations around it. And then come back here and tell me what happens because someone's going to come up to you and say it. I just know it happens all the time. Well, this is Margaret Lynch, creator of the Tapping Into Wealth Coach training program and all my Tapping Into Wealth coaches watching. This is a really cool process that you can do with your clients. Do it on yourself first because it's always awesome. And I'll see you guys on my next Facebook Live. You never know when they're coming, but there's more coming. Bye.